Hi, I'm Mark Claiborne, and today I'm joined by Chris Whittle from Ellen Crom, and we're talking about your new baby, which is the One. Um, we're going to have a quick review of kind of what it does and kind of how it comes as kits and everything else. Tell us a little bit about the One, Chris. Okay. Um, the D-Lite RX1 is a 100 watt second flash unit. It uses all the technology from the top of the range, so it's, uh, it's not a second best, it really is a fantastic unit. Um, power range from 100 watt seconds down to 5 watt seconds. Recycles to full power in 1.5 seconds. Um, the power variation is in digital tenths of a stop, so it's absolutely accurate. Uh, flash duration is very fast, um, about two thousandth of a second, T0.5, um, and the colour temperature varies by only three to four hundred degrees Kelvin across the whole power range. If you Which look, is quite unique by itself. Oh, it? fantastic. Really, uh, it's a top quality performance in an entry level unit. Um, at first sight, you would really think that this is just designed for the entry-level photographer, but it is in the Elinchrom range to complement the whole range, isn't it? We're getting down to a low power uh, being able. So, in other words, it, because I shoot a lot of 2.8 and f4, for me, the one is perfect because I can obviously get down the amount of the pure power itself without having to use accessories on the front to diffuse the light and reduce the amount of intensity. Was it specifically designed for the entry-level flash photographer? Well... The simple answer is that it's designed for the top professional photographer, but it will also do a fantastic job for the entry-level photographer. Um, if you think about it, the small chip cameras uh, do need uh, wide apertures to get shallow depth of field. So the professionals need the, the shallow depth of field just as much as the keen amateurs. Um, it's simply serendipitous that we've created this very small entry-level low-power unit that also has a fantastic price point. Price point's the key thing here as well, isn't it? Really, it's, it's in a range now which is cheaper for a kit or as close to as a simple speed light for a, ca a camera, but you've got all the functionality of true professional flash. I mean, one-tenth of stop adjustments. We, it includes the Skyport control, so I can radio trigger the flash to fire from the, cam the camera without extra investment and control the power of the flash from the camera position as well, isn't it, by using the Skyport exactly. controller? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, this will also integrate, like the other Elinchrom heads, with the uh, speed light. So if I need to use a speed light within the mix, it allows us to put it into a, a pre-flash setting as well to be able to control that. I think because there's so much functionality on here, Chris, can you just get, talk, uh, talk us through the basics of the kind of the setups on the back of Absolutely. Uh, the unit itself? OK, so let me just talk you through the controls. Um, Basically, at a top level, um, what you see on the buttons here is exactly the function of each of those buttons. So this is everything to do with the uh, tone on recycle. This is the open flash button. This is everything to do with the modeling lamp. This is everything to do with the slave cell. These are up and down arrows for the power. Um, and here, of course, we've got the on-off switch, um, the fuse, a synchronization connector, um, and the mains power inlet. This is the slave cell. So starting at the very beginning, tone on, the LED here shows that it's on or off. Open flash button, uh, the green LED tells you that it's ready. So if I press it and fire it, then when it recycles, it comes back. Let me put the tone back on. Um, slave cell on or off. Modeling lamp, this is the power control where point 0.1 is minimum power, four is maximum power. So as I toggle through the power of the modeling lamp, you'll see that is full modeling, that is off, that is proportional with the green LED, and that is minimum. And it just toggles through. Maximum, off, proportional, minimum. Um, up and down arrows for the power here. Um, down in tenths of a stop, or up in tenths of a stop, so if I want to go down in power by one stop from 3.3, I go down to 2.3, and I can either press this and hold it, or I can press it in individual tenths of a stop. So there's a lot of control there. Behind here, you've got the radio, so you can set four groups, eight frequencies. Um, on the modeling lamp, you can uh, have the setting a minimum, uh, proportional, maximum, or off. Um, also with the modelling lamp, you can switch the modelling lamp to a half power mode, so if you want to use a more powerful flash unit, say a D-Lite 2, you can have two modelling lamps the same and have it proportional across the range with the D-Lite 1 and the D-Lite 2 working together. So let's start with the tone on recycle. If I want to adjust the duration of the tone, 
I can press and hold this tone button, um, you'll see that there is a display on the left hand side which shows the audio. So A1 is a very short beep, A7 is a very long beep, so if I've got two or three heads firing at the same time, I can differentiate each of them becoming ready. Um, with, the, uh, with the slave cell, you can set that to learn a pre-flash sequence, so you can use your speed lights in conjunction with this unit as well. So it really will do everything. OK, let's first of all talk about the speed light use, uh, usage. So to set this into the learn mode, so in other words, just before I take my test shot with my speed light, I need to make sure that the pre-flash is going to fire the head uh, at the full flash speed light as such yeah. and not at the, uh, the kind of the pre uh, the pre flash. What do I do to go into that? Yeah, all you do is on the slave cell here, slave cell on, slave cell off. But if I press and hold the button, you'll see that the LED starts to flicker. And what that means is that it's now in its pre flash um, synchronization mode, which means if your speed light has got pre flashes, then it can be set to the number of pre-flashes plus the main flash and that will then synchronize at the correct moment. If on the other hand you don't know how many flashes you've got then you can uh, set a zero setting which is a learning setting and it will then uh, learn the pre-flash sequence when you fire the flash gun at the uh, head itself. So let me just show you that. If I press and hold it for 10 seconds it goes through the pre-flash sequence setting and now I can set the number of flashes so two pre-flashes and one main flash, I would set C3. Or if I don't know how many uh, pre-flashes I've got, I set C0, and it will then learn the number of pre-flashes and the flash when you actually fire it at the, fl at the uh, flash head, and it will set it. So if somebody else fires a flash, it will read it and set it. But let's turn that off. Yeah. Perfect. And that's the way to use it to begin with. And then it re remembers it until you do a factory re reset on the head. Exactly right. Yeah. OK, uh, other little mm -hmm. things really are the, mo uh, the modelling bulb through here. So there's kind of three different settings going through it, isn't there? Yes, there are. So if I press and hold the modelling lamp button, now I can set a function one here, which means that when the modelling lamp, uh, when the flash unit fires, the modelling lamp will dim on recycle. So you can see very quickly that each head is fired, even if you want to have the ready beeps turned off. The other thing I can do is if I press and hold the modelling lamp button, I can also set minus one, which means that the modelling lamp on this unit will go down to a half power level. So if I'm using a D-Light 2 as my second light with the same modelling lamp in each, the 100 watt modelling lamp on the D-Light 2 will be giving full power where this is in a half power range and the modelling lamps therefore are still proportional. Brilliant. And because the, uh, the kits are available in two uh, and because you've got the functionality of Sky, uh, Skyport, it's useful to talk about the grouping, isn't it? Because if I want to adjust my heads, the flash heads, uh, from camera position instead of having to re kind of go over to them and press the buttons. We've got the, uh, sky, the, the sky port that will allow us to change it. I tend to use my key light, my main light, uh, in my group one because that's obviously the main thing that I want to fire. And then I would tend to have my background light and my hair and my hair light set to group four on that. And, and this works in exactly the same way it as all, all the other Ellen Crumbs before? It does. Everything to do with the radio transmitter is behind these buttons here. So if I press the two together, I can have radio off, radio on, or high speed radio. If I then press the modeling lamp button, I can select the group, one, two, three, four. If I press it again, I can select the frequency, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I press it again, I can adjust the flash increments. So if I've got a lens with third of a stop increments, I can set the unit so that each press of the button will adjust the power by a, th a third of a stop. And finally, having really, really messed up all the controls on the unit, if I press and hold, if I turn the unit off, press and hold the up and down arrows and turn it back on again, it gives me R6, which is revision 6 of the software. It's put the unit back to factory default settings and I'm ready to go again. Ready to go. Brilliant. And that won't fire this flash then if it was in a different group until we switch all the groups on? Well, in fact, that one behind you is set to group two. So if I now uh, press group two, that light behind you is firing. If I set group one, this light fires. And if I put it to all, they both fire. Brilliant. Um, 
the other thing is, of course, it's not just synchronising, I can adjust the power. So I take my flash meter, if I want a third of a stop more, I simply press the up button, one, two, three, and that increases the power a third of a stop. Terrific. Now they're available in two different kits. One is an uh, umbrella kit, one is a soft softbox kit. Why the two different kits? Um, most people are working in very small environments. Umbrellas are fantastic. They're very quick to assemble. They're fantastic in a, a very large hall because the light will not reflect back into the image. Um, but within a small room, uh, because of the way that the umbrellas work and spread the light everywhere, if there are reflections back from the walls of the room, from the curtains, from the ceiling, you will not only get desaturation of the shadows, but you carry colour cast as well. The advantage of the softbox kit is that you can get in very close and, uh, and effectively the light goes where you need it and not where you don't need it. Cool. So um, the accessories that are still available to go with these as well, I mean, these are the... Um uh, soft, uh, the soft boxes that come with the one kit. Yeah. Um, they're available as two head kits and they're sold as an individual head as well? They are, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got the uh, accessories that I love, which is the kind of, um, oh, I call these reflector caps. What deflectors. Deflectors, they, they, with it. they deflect the direct light back into the um, reflector surface. Brilliant. Uh, and this is obviously just a diffusion cap, so that's going to lose some of the direct, uh, directional light, but kind of create more of a beauty dish environment yeah. with it. If we use the, sil the silver one again, that gets us more to a beauty dish kind of environment and kind of a, diff a different control on that. But there's also things like the snoots and the reflector dishes and honeycombs as well to add into the range. Exactly. Uh, which are all obviously sold separately to the unit itself. They are. Um, I mean, the, two the common parts of the two kits are two stands, the two heads, two caps, two mains cables, um, the two bags, that's the stand bag and the head bag. Um, and the remote control and the radio trigger, uh, this unit here. The differences then are the uh, softbox kit includes simply two softboxes. The umbrella kit includes, in place of the softboxes, the two umbrellas, the uh, white, uh, black umbrella and the translucent umbrella. That's two umbrellas, but also the umbrella reflectors here. The only thing you'd be missing from the softbox kit, as it were, if you wanted to add uh, an umbrella into your mix at any stage, would be in the investment into a reflector dish, isn't it, to control That's that. right. Um, but in fact, the uh, honeycomb grid with the 18 centimetre reflector, uh, which you'd use typically for a hair light or a backlight, um, that reflector will also work very well with the umbrellas. So in a sense, if you were to choose to add this grid, the fact that you don't have the 16 centimetre reflector would not be a problem. Good. Chris, the, you know, the thing to remember, uh, to remember here as well, that what we're talking about is kits that are cheaper than basically almost one speed light. And you've also got the remote control ability. By the time you buy a speed light on, on camera flash, in other words, you want to take that off camera, you'd have to add in a radio trigger of, of some sort in there. By investing into the entry level, kind of the D-Lite RX1, you're pretty much going to spend the same amount of money and you've got flash, professional flash equipment. Exactly. Um, I mean, we think the price of the um, softbox kit is going to be about £425, including VAT. The price of the umbrella kit is going to be around £375, including VAT. Bear in mind that includes the stands, it includes the remote control, it includes the radio trigger, um, it includes the modelling lamp and it's the bags and everything. Speed light. It is, it is, <laughs> absolutely. Brilliant. Chris, thanks for this. I know it's a little, kind of little short film, how to get into the one. Uh, we're going to be making some film with the one to actually really show its uh, du uh, durability and usability as well with it because the two-headed kit is enough to get great photographs with. And let's not forget the power of one. One, one head alone is a great kind of source of yeah. light and control of the light is the key thing with it. So I'm, I'm Mark Cleborn with Chris Whittle from Ellen Crom. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.